Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome to Truth Talk Live. All right, let's talk. The truth is, I can hide it. A daily program powered by the Truth Network. This is kind of a great thing, and I'll tell you why. Where pop culture, current events, and theology all come together. Speak your mind. And now, here's today's Truth Talk Live host. It has been devastating. Actually, I've heard the word apocalyptic. Um, What's going on here since Hurricane Helene in the southeast and Florida and Georgia and South Carolina and certainly here in North Carolina. As we've heard, death tolls are well over 120 in North Carolina alone. We understand that's jumped up over 95. And so as we, as we talk about that today on Truth Talk Live, the question is, how is the church, right? How are you? How are you responding to the Helene aftermath I would love your thoughts, your prayers. You know, what do you think? An 866, the number to call in, 866-348-7884, 866-348-7884. I have here with me uh, my very, very, very good friend and Christian car guy, um, you know, longtime associate, our Christian body shop guy, uh, Jerry from Ray's Body Shop, but they, they... You've been working on it all weekend, and, and, and God put it on your heart to get a truck together and a whole bunch of stuff, Jerry. Yeah, once the, once the storm finally hit. Yeah, we got to get your mic on. But hold on. <laughs> all right, let's try that mic. Maybe we can. Yeah, can you hear this? Yeah. All there right. You go. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, once the aftermath, once it had finally hit and we saw the devastation of everything, it was kind of a. You know, God just said, what, what, what can you do? What, what can you do to, to help people? Because I tell you, the footprint of this is just so huge. And over the last, I mean, years, I've worked with different organizations and stuff where we've done flood relief supplies and stuff. And so it was kind of natural. I even had a lot of people that have helped in the past called and said, hey, are you going to do anything? And I said, well, yeah, I don't know what it is yet, but talked to Danny Spainauer at Pinedale Christian Church and said, you know, I'd like to go ahead and partner with the church and let's figure out something to do. And then things started moving pretty quickly from that point on. And so as we stand here today, we've got a tractor and trailer that we're hoping to get filled up by this, by Sunday at this time. We'll have it full and ready to send it up to Watauga County and bring up uh, just a lot of supplies. And, And the thing is, when you sit there and, and something like this happens and you go, you know what, there's so many, what can I do? A lot of times not being organized, you can do more harm than good. And I've learned that lesson also, how to make sure that the timing's right and stuff. That's part of the reason, you know, there's a lot of damage in Asheville. It's a lot of damage in Florida, you know, South Carolina, and you go all the way up Tennessee. But some of it is where people coming in that's where the, the like Billy Graham the you know their organizations need to be involved because they're equipped and are able to go in and help instead of being in the way and there's that first few weeks it's kind of a you trying to trying to straddle the fence of being helpful or being in the way and so we realize that that most of the time figure out where a place that access is easy to get in and out we always try to find a church to be an area to be the drop-off point and also the distribution point and for this storm that came in we was able to partner with uh, Fisco Church in Watauga County right it's between Grandfather Mountain and Boone in the North and, Carolina in for North those Carolina. Who are listening in Ohio and they that are out. a uh, they're right now they're a shelter and will be transitioning into a distribution center and as you're listening there's so many you know, I, I know you think, well, I, I'm not really affected, but I tell you what, as I said, it's such a huge footprint. And as a Christian, I hope it's stirring people's hearts. You know, how can I help my brother? Because you know what? One thing that I always realize, and when you talk to people, and Robbie, you know this also, you know, it doesn't take much for the table to be turned and for me oh, yeah. and you to be in that same <laughs> situation. And you know what, as a Christian, if we can do that through the name of Jesus Christ, then it's more than just bringing them a bottle of water. We're bringing them more than just that, that water to meet that thirst need. We're bringing them something that hopefully will 
lasts much longer, and that's being able to know that it was through Jesus Christ and that they see Christ in, in our actions. Yeah, that's and, and that's a lot of wisdom in what what he just described, and Jerry described, is that there are first responders, and those first responders need to be able to get where they need to get to, and then there's some that come right in behind them, and you know, we got the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Actually, Jim Kirkland's going to be calling in here in a few minutes. And Andy Bowersox, who's with Energized Ministries, he, you know, they're up there. And, and we're going to hear from him at about 420. But what about you? You know, what, what is it that you know or how are you praying or what are some of your thoughts? You know, there's some very tragic, I mean, tragic, tragic unbelievably tragic stories one of them you're intimately familiar with jerry yeah and a lot of people probably heard the story of the three people on the roof that it were told to go to the roof of their house and wait for rescue and then you know with the water and stuff you know water is so powerful and that's something people don't realize it just kind of just just took the strength out of the the roof and the roof caved in and so all three of them fell through the roof and drowned and that was you know that that's just those stories just break your heart and and, and you know and as me and Robbie were talking earlier, I think because there's still areas that are isolated, and those numbers that we're seeing, those death numbers, I think are going to just just continue to rise. And you know, there's families and and people's homes and people's businesses that are just destroyed. And and I sit there and watch the videos from some of these. I watched Chimney Rock just basically that whole town be destroyed. I mean, it's I don't. There's not much left of chimney rock as we sit here today yeah another friend was telling me that there was another family that was on the roof they were trying to get them rescued but as the rescuers couldn't get up the road there in it, there in boone north carolina and, and they ended up taking these four wheelers because they could get them up there well on the four wheelers on their way up they come across a tree that's crossed a house and they find four people that are actually under the tree that, that they were able to rescue on the way to go get the people that were on top of the roof. In other words, it's what makes it more difficult is when all the communications went out out of that part of North Carolina. And if you had friends and family up there, you know what I'm talking about. I made I don't know how many calls to get, you know, nobody can talk because they don't have the cell phone coverage and that kind of thing. And so here are these people under this tree. And, and praise God, you know, this other family getting the rescue, you know, off it comes. And so... You know, what do you, what do you know about this? You know, what would you say the church could do, will do, help, you know, all those things. We would love your calls. 866-348-7884. You know, what is the church response in the aftermath of a lean today on Truth Talk Live? But it won't be the same without you. You call us 866-348-7884. We'll be right back. History was made. Pastor and teacher Chuck Swindoll. Visit Insight for Living's website at insight.org. Well, welcome back to True Talk Live today. A sad day, certainly across the country, as we've got so much going on in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene and, uh, you know, the stories after stories, and maybe. You know, you've got one that we should be praying about or you know about. We would love to hear, you know, what your thoughts are, you know, what maybe your church is doing. What's going, what, what was the response of the church in this situation? 866-348-7884, 866-348-7884. We got a couple of the first responders going to be calling in for a while in, in a, just a few minutes, but... We have my good friend and and Jerry with Ray's Body Shop and Record Service. They are putting together a truck that that hopefully will leave out early, early uh, next week. Early hopefully. next week. Yeah. And the the thing I find fascinating, you've done these, and what people need is a lot different than what you might think. You've learned that. It's yeah, and you know, Robbie, as we were talking off the air, one thing that really surprised me is the need for dog food and cat food. And you think, I mean, you know what, you're going through a flood, you don't have anything, you don't really think, it doesn't really register that you're going to, you would need that. But I had conversations with people, and they would say, you know, that people would not, you would, they'd get food, non-perishables, and not eat it, but I would also split it with their animal. And even their kids would do without as much. They'd split it all because they don't want to see their animals starve to death. So getting those, those 
pet foods down there is just huge. You don't think about it. And as we're laughing about it, because Robbie said, well, I, you know, don't understand that. And I said, well, I can tell you now, if uh, we was in a crisis and my wife would let me starve just so I fed my dog. <laughs> so I, I know. Exactly. I, and as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, Tammy, with our dogs. And oh, yeah, that's. Robbie's going to go hungry, yeah, but if gonna, that, that's the said, situation. You're a big boy. You can, you can make it a while without it. You know. <laughs> but it's no laughing matter for certain. It's, it's a scary situation. And when those people are in that need, uh, so what's going on is you guys are taking items right now over at Ray's Body Shop Record Service. You happen to be in the Winston-Salem, North Carolina area. But wherever you are, whether your church is, but the things that people need are the non-perishables, diapers, diapers, non-perishables, cleaning supplies, and, and that's something you don't really think about. Um, one other thing that's kind of people don't think about that much, and I realized this a few years, well, quite a few years back, I think maybe when one of the trips to Tarboro, when the flooding was, was batteries, how many people are, everything they are, you know, no longer have electricity, so everything is battery operated, and they couldn't find batteries anywhere, so we really made a push and one of the, because we made about three runs down there, and one of the one of the trips down there was basically batteries and and diapers, and it was just a, something you don't. I didn't think about. Then you think about it, it sure makes a lot of sense. That's that's the only source of power they have. So, and and as a matter of fact, I had somebody talk to me this past weekend about getting sending. It was on, they said they had access to those little solar panels. That you the little ones that are no right. bigger than a cell phone that you could do that set up and charge your phone and that type of thing with it. Well, you might be aware of this. I am that um, certainly, you know, our church was Tashboro Baptist Church is within you could almost throw a rock and hit Everetti, and so a lot of our, our members work for Everetti, and I know that they have access <laughs> to all kinds of emergency batteries. So I'll see what I can find out. Um, yeah, and from, it, it, from 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 some connections of what we can get them some batteries what kind of batteries just all of them triple yeah, a think, nine yeah, volt yeah yeah because it's everybody has different type of you know so just any kind of batteries and they'll usually find you know if they're available they're going to pick the ones they need and stuff and so there's so many there's just such a huge need there and you just kind of you know always will say if it's just something that you see you want to pick up if that's what god tells you to to, to bring Believe me, somebody will use it because they've lost everything. And the things that we take for granted, we don't realize till you don't have something just how much it means to you and how much you need it to survive almost. And, you know, one thing, as I said, is as Robbie, as you mentioned, Ray's Body Shop and Record Service, we're taking in donations now because the trailer probably won't be set up till Wednesday or Thursday at Pinedale. And so we're really planning on having a big push Saturday and Sunday and hope to get it filled up. Saturday, we're going to take donations to the trailer from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, and it'll be kind of And hectic. that's at Pinedale Christian Church, Pinedale again, Christian if you're Church. in Winston-Salem, and, and that's something that, that you could make. Yeah, that, and, and so it'll be hectic around there, so I invite you to come because also we'll be doing our Veterans Dental Clinic at same weekend. But there's other organizations out there, and again, I'm, I just think it's so important, if at all possible, if you can do it with a Christian organization, it just gives the opportunity to share Christ with people. And they are able to see, as uh, every time you, I think even Stu stuck his head in here and he said, you know, there's people who don't believe in, in Jesus Christ, but there certainly will be there for the, for the help. And if we can do that, it may be what, be, be the, what opens that door to people and, and lets them know that, you know what? These people care for me for one reason. Jesus Christ cares for them. Right. That's absolutely the case. And when that stuff comes in his name and, and you know, organizations like Samaritan's Purse are on the, on the scene right now. And, again, find out what your church is doing. You know, we would love to hear, you know, stories of what you guys are doing out there or what other things that we should be doing, obviously praying. But we want to hear your story, 866 348 Seven eight eight four eight six six three four truth or maybe you had a connection to a family member and and you know some of the people personally that we need to be praying for the situation you know I certainly have some that I've yet to be able to reach that are up there that um, I would really like to know that they're okay yeah and if you if you're in Ohio or, or 
Florida or wherever it may be. I mean, maybe you call in and just talk about an organization that you know in your area that is collecting and, and doing something, you know, spread the word. Yeah, because and and again, the beauty of it is, is like I was in Georgia um, over the weekend at a car show at Sweetwater Baptist Church, but I drove through South Carolina on Friday afternoon after it had blown through. And what I saw, not so much in Georgia, but in South Carolina, below where Asheville is, uh, thousands, of, not hundreds of trees, thousands of trees that it had come across Interstate 85 and, and that had been cut off and left there on the shoulder, just tree after tree after tree. And I thought, oh my goodness, how many houses, how many cars, how many people, you know, and then you, you couldn't get gas at a lot of the places because there was no power. And you could find a gas station that was open and oh my goodness, they were all backed up just to get gasoline, right? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it's, you know, the other thing that, that we kind of overlook sometimes when you see this and you think that you know what i'm going to really pour into it for a week or two weeks three weeks maybe a month but so many of these families are this is going to be years of recovery and 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 it's just so important to, and that, that's why i think it's so important to, to to work with churches and stuff because also what i like to do when we do and i do things i always try to find a local church that's that's operating as a shelter and distribution center and work through them because that'll hopefully brings that community to that church where they're going to, you know, be there to to go alongside them for more than just a couple weeks. Oh, it's, it's what makes all the difference. It really, really does. So, you know, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, hopefully we'll have some of those first responders and we're going to call in for us for second responders. I guess you'd better call them, but uh, we would love to hear yours. 866-348-7884. 866-348-7884. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Truth Talk Live. Today, how is the church, how should the church respond to the aftermath of Eileen? We've heard Oh, horrific reports of all that has gone on. And, you know, what is the body of Christ's response to that? Uh, we're waiting on Jim Kirtland with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. We're trying to get up with him. Andy Bowersox with Energized Ministries are all on the scene right now. And, and part of what we're hearing from them is it's one thing for all of us to see, um, you know, we see the news, we see the landslides, we see the death tolls, we see all that. But if you're isolated up right now and you're on the mountain and nobody's had cell phone service and, and no power and, and all that, they, they're alone and they don't know what in the world's going on and they don't know how long to work, you know, all this is going to go on or, you know, and, and they're just very, very isolated. And so, man, your prayers uh, are just huge, uh, you know, just absolutely huge. But also the practical aspect of, Jerry, you guys are putting stuff together there for Pinedale, but right now they can drop it off at Jerry's Body Shop here in Winston-Salem. And at your church, I'm sure they're looking for the same kind of things. And so critical supplies that that, are, that, that you guys are collecting are water, obviously. Yeah, if you get water, at, uh, you know, diapers are, are huge and stuff. And because that's just something you got kids and stuff, that diapers water non-perishable foods and again batteries that's something you don't think about and and also pet food and then you just go down it's you know just right now so many people have nothing and that's one of the things we talked to the people at a couple of the shelters and stuff they said people don't have a house to go back to and they're there and what they had is what they carried under their arms or in a backpack or something and that's that's everything they have because the devastation of this, you know, for me, it's just so hard to wrap my mind around just losing everything. And that's what they've done. I mean, you can talk to somebody after a fire or a flood and they'll talk about all the, you know, what that, that they had my wedding pictures or my parents' pictures in there. And, or, you know, memories are just, you know, they just got washed away. And that's just, as I said, this is something that the uh, initial thing you think in a few weeks will be over and rebuilt. But a lot of these people don't have insurance, don't have means to rebuild. They don't have means to rebuild their life. So that's well, why it's just so important. How could they even important. get insurance against yeah. something like you that? Can't. There isn't, there isn't yeah. insurance. You know, and, and so what do you do if they don't have the, didn't have the, the funds and the, the money and the resources, they can't rebuild. So they just lost 
probably things that their whole life's work. And that's why it's just so important to me to, to make sure that we do this through Christ and also do it through local churches and stuff that they can maybe help walk this journey with them because it's not going to be a this week or next week or this month or maybe next month. It may be five years from now. They're still trying to come out of the devastation of this. And that's that that's just hard to see. And and, and I personally and I know Robbie does too, you know, we hurt for, for that. Hurt for those people. Yeah. And and you know, it's amazing to me as I I mentioned we were at this car show that that, that you do do the show so wonderfully every year. And one of the things I want to point out is the whole purpose of the show has always been to share Christ. That 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 was what they told me from the get go and they've always had me there to to um, share a gospel message. But you know what happened Saturday was they're praying, praying, praying that God will be made real to somebody, right? And, and clearly, you know, my wife is asking that question in Asheville right now. You know, how did, why did God, well, maybe you've heard that old song, you know, what if a thousand sleepless nights is what it takes to know you're near? Well, for a lot of folks, they didn't realize how close God was until, you know, here they are in this situation. And I don't understand. I really don't. But I do know that, that God does. And so when, when we're supplying that, and I was just going to tell this story about this man. He was 71 years old. And one of the guys there at Sweetwater was judging his car. Great guy by the name of Anthony, by the way. And he says to him, he says, so, uh, you know, do you love Jesus? to the guy, you know, he's judging his car and he goes, oh, oh, I've been in church since I was eight years old and, you know, I never miss it. And he goes on like that. And, and of course, this deacon being very um, cognizant of the situation says, well, there's a bigger question. Like if you took your last breath right this minute, you know, do you know where you would end up? A and the man said, honestly, I, I really don't. A and uh, my friend said to him, you can know, and you can know right now. And he went on to share, exactly, you know. Jesus died for you. You know, his blood was there for your sin. And if you accept that, and you, and if you can know that you know that, that, you know, you're on your way to heaven right now. And so what happened, and all of us saw it, man, is, you know, this guy starts bawling. And, I mean, he's receiving Christ right there in the spot. And next thing you know, they're on the pavement. They're, they're literally down on their, on their knees down there begging for God to, to you know. It, it was a beautiful, wonderful, amazing thing. But, yeah, it's as simple as a car show, but it's done in Jesus' name, right? It's done with his power, and it's done with all of y'all's prayers. In other words, as we all are praying, that God has a purpose, right? That, that he's not going to let, he's not going to waste pain. He just doesn't do it. And, and so here's this opportunity for the, us to be the hands and feet of Christ. But whoever is actually delivering the goods, the, you know, they're delivering them with our prayers and, and with our opportunity to, to share that kind of message, you know, that to me, it, it's, 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 you know, you talk about they're working out of this stuff for a lifetime, but we're talking about working out stuff for eternity, Right. And and and, his, and 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 God cares way more about their eternity than what's going to go on over the next you know twenty or thirty years, and it's our opportunity to be part of what God's doing. Yeah, God wants us to walk alongside those that are hurting, and and that's just so powerful. And and as we're sitting here, and I think you know, there's probably people listening. And I wish people would call and say if they know organizations that are doing stuff, or if you're if there's a story that a family member or, or a friend that's in the middle of this that that. Just, you know, just just reach out for prayer for them. But another thing people can do, I mean, if you're sitting there, I know a lot of churches, a lot of smaller churches and local churches and different parts of our listening audience that may be looking for something to do and say, well, I can't really an organization as far as getting them there. If you do a collection, then somebody could just like if you're in this, this Winston-Salem area, you know, have your church do a collection and Saturday or Sunday bring it to Pinedale. We'll put it in the trailer and it'll get up there with all the other stuff because every little bit will make a difference. And you don't, you know, sometimes we will think, you know what, my little bit or, or we're a small church, we can't help. But you know what, it does help. But the most important thing is just what, Robbie, you were just talking about is the prayers. It's just just knowing that they're just bathed in prayer and just praying for 
for peace and comfort for people, just safety for people, and, and, and just prayers that they'll have the strength to carry on because there's a lot of people out there who whose their relationship with Christ is, is is fragile. And I hate to say it, and sometimes, as you mentioned, this may be the thing as the deacon in beside the car that finally points it out. You know what? Where's your faith really at? Where's your trust really at? Right. And when you have to honestly answer that it can be a humbling experience then uh, you know it's it's also a wonderful opportunity I, I know that i talked to my daughter saturday night she's crying i mean she's just devastated by the whole what's going on right and and sh- and she's trying to find a way to put you know her feet to her faith you know what can i do what can, dad what can i do and and carmen who is the program director here you know, when she heard what Pinedale was doing, what you guys were doing, you know, immediately she was like, man, man, I, you know, what do I, can, I, she wants to take part in that. Everybody does. And so, you know, if you can put that together at your church, your Sunday school, I guarantee you if, if, if Jerry's truck gets full, we'll find a way, we'll find somebody that's doing, I, I, you know, again, Andy Bowersox all over the place with Energized Ministries and, you know, he'll be going up there trip after trip because it's just not one trip, is it, Jerry? This no, is and, and this we, is a long term thing. Yeah, we always plan on it not being one trip because of really to tell you the truth, we get up there and the first trip is to get that need met and then kind of find out what the next step is because every area is different, every situation's a little bit different, the devastation's a little different. So it may not even be going back to the same church. It may be in a few weeks, some roads are opened back up and the need be somewhere else. And that may be where our next trip is. It may be in outside of Asheville. It may be in Lake oh, There's Lore places in South Carolina, know, yeah. I can assure you. And <laughs> I can assure you. And certainly in Florida, oh, my word. I mean, and more people that lost everything. And, and, and what, what's even worse is the families of those who, who lost lives, yeah. uh, you know, and you know, that where faith really can make a difference is somebody's just putting an arm around them. Sometimes people just need to know that somebody cares for them. And then by them feeling somebody cares for them, if we can make sure, if we're the one caring for them, that we let them know the reason we care for them is because Jesus Christ cares for them more than we do. Right. And so if you're sitting there, you know, you're thinking, I, you know, let me get in on this. I want to talk about what God's put on my heart for this or what my church, we would love to hear. We would love to hear from you. 866-348-7884, 866-348-7884. How should, how can the church respond under this situation? Um, we would love to hear your thoughts. We'll be right back with a whole lot more True Talk Live. Welcome back to Truth Talk Live today. How can the church respond? You know, what can we do uh, in the aftermath of Aline? The, the, the death count is well over, you know, 120 nationally, and we, and we fear that that will more than double as they get to all the, the poor folks that they, they just had no way to get to them, no, no way to know that they were in trouble because, you know, one of the first things that happened up there was they, that they lost cell phone coverage and, and then the power went out and, and nobody's got any communication and, and things are difficult. And so, uh, you know, this, I think, what were you saying, over 95 in North Carolina alone? Yeah, that's what I heard before I came in was 95 in North Carolina. And, well, like I said, I think those numbers, and I mean, everybody will know those numbers are going to go up just because of isolation and areas that they can't get to. It's it's hard. So if you know you you know may know somebody that we can be praying for, you know specifically a family you know stranded, a family that's lost someone, you know that's what we're here for. The body of Christ come together in prayer. Obviously, we're putting together supplies. We're doing all those kind of things. But we would love your call, eight six six three four eight seven eight eight four eight six six three four truth. I was telling uh, Jerry right before the her turn the break that. It, you know, when Hurricane David hit Savannah, I, I got trapped on Wilmington Island, and I got to experience, actually, being on Ground Zero when that hurricane came in. 
And and it's exactly like emergency broadcast is there's no you don't hear anything because the power goes out the radios go out you have no communication and you're in no man's land and i don't think we had um power for about three or four weeks and ice was like on a high pro like if you could find ice you were the luckiest man in the world and 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 of course that's perishable so you don't just truck ice up there so easy um but it's it, it you know and it was an a, a difficult a difficult situation but i told jerry the you know he had mentioned that dog food was a was a big must up there well the whole reason i went back to the island to begin with that i got stuck was because of my dog and and there i was now i had to feed it for three weeks with no you know uh with the food that we were sharing because it was all you know we could do and and you have no idea what it's like to be that isolated or i wouldn't have had any idea what it'd be like to be that as isolated and the 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 idea that you really have no concept of what a, what might be going on. You can't see the ground. You can't see roads because there's debris everywhere. And and with those mudslides and all that's going on up there, you know, it's it's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, you sit there and you think. I mean, you just, just imagine that as we're sitting here today, in 30 minutes from now, everything we own is gone. I mean, you just just wrap your brain around that, and that that's what they're experiencing and stuff. So it's it's just uh, I mean, it's just heartbreaking. Like I like I said, one thing that really kind of sticks in my mind so much is just the just the massive land that has been affected, and and you know, I've worked a lot of hurricane relief things, and usually it's more central. It's not nearly this this massive, and and cover as many states and affect as many towns and counties to the level that it is i mean it's usually you'll you can always know where the eye of the storm was where the, the one part was hit harder but right now that that, that footprint is huge no oh, it was it was really something well we got mike is in dayton ohio and you know up there where you've watched this all take place mike i i, I know that you're praying my friend yes i am and uh can you hear the generator in my backyard it hit ohio a little bit too Oh, really? Um, I got, yeah, the, we got windstorm, about 70 miles an hour windstorms and knocked out a bunch of power. Huge area in Dayton, Ohio, uh, Kettering area, lots of homes lost power, over 200,000 200, people lost homes. I got a re an older couple to the left of me and an older couple to the right of me, and I got extension cords running left and right. I'm... <laughs> I got food and I'm cooking for both of them, making sure they're okay. Uh, pray for me as well. And uh, it's 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 a it's not it's this power. Um, it's not loss of home or loss of life or loss of things that other people in North Carolina and Florida and everywhere else. But um, uh, here we are in Ohio, and we got the a little bit of it too. Um, the the guys down the street are cutting down trees to get get the power lines up right now and it's a um, you know it's this stressful time a little bit you know you're worried about your food and your refrigerator that you spend a lot of money for and so did my neighbors and we got we got and take care of it but um uh it's you know it's oh yeah i i'm with you because i like yeah. i said when i was in hurricane david we were without power for three weeks and yeah, and we, it's 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 a devastating thing. If you've been without power since Friday, this you're on day four, or whatever, right? Yes, we are, and um, the, uh, my I'm tired of my hands smelling like gas, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not, you know, and, but you know, it is it is what it is, and thank right. God we we have a generator and and money to pay for gas, and 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 I can take care of our neighbors and. Well, why don't why don't um, Mike why don't why don't we just pray and I'll just I'll just start and 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 uh, Jerry and then you jump in okay that'd be okay. A really I can't think of a better thing to do I really can't Lord thank you so much for uh, those that you have protected through this storm and 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 we know that you're coming to the rescue of those that are in desperate need and 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 Lord show us and help us to know where we need to engage in this what we can do lord we do pray for those poor poor folks who've lost family members or those that are hospitalized because if there's kind of death tolls you can imagine the injuries that people are facing lord we know that that you're on top of all that and 
And, and Lord, we pray that you would come to the rescue. Lord, come to the rescue as we know that that is, that is what you do, that you are a God who saves. And so come to the rescue of those who have never known you. And as a result of this tragedy, see um, you in a new, fresh way, Lord. Um, we know you're going to work this all for good. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Lord, right now I just lift up Mike. I lift up the fact that, um, you know what, God put him there for a reason, and that is to be, you know, to bring comfort to his neighbors, and I just thank you for that. I thank you for all those that are are, are, are out there on the front just uh, just working, the, the first responders, the people trying to restore power, the people just trying to clean the roads and try to get things open back up. I just lift up those that have lost so much, lost life, lost friends, lost family, lost homes and businesses. Lord, sometimes when we're on this side of uh, th those crises, it's hard to understand sometimes, but we know that you're in control. We know that you may not bring it on, but we also know that you can bring the good out of it. And I just pray that that good will be bring people to Christ, that through it all, as people's are, people are reaching out for help, that they'll see that it's coming from Jesus Christ and that they'll understand the importance of having that relationship with you. Again, just uh, be with Mike. Be with all those out there in the listening audience that, that, that is out there sacrificing so much for those in so much need. Yes, Lord, I just uh, pray that um, the North Carolina and the South Carolina and all the hurricane words, Florida, all the people that were really devastated by by this Lord, that uh, you make a way that that is uplifting and and that they know that you are the reason why things came to the good and not from the ba from the bad to the good because oh because you're in charge and Lord I you're you're not in charge of the weather and the bad but you're in charge of our lives and Lord may the first responders and the second responders take uh just keep them safe safe and and uh and let them know that you're with them and and uh take care of them and and as well lord in jesus name yeah and i was just thinking lord guide them guide those responders to the people that are really hurt and help them to find yes, the ones that are yes, under sir. trees or in in dire dire need wherever that may be and may the church find those that are in dire dire need of you May you give us unbelievable discernment and just a beautiful wisdom on how to really be of service to you to be um, in where you're working. And, and Lord, I again thank you for my friends, and I thank you for all that I know you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Rob. hey Robbie, where's the monetary gift that I can send to you, to um, the, the guy that's with you today? Oh, with Jerry, with um, Pinedale? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you yes, can, uh, please send the, put it on your website or something so I can uh, send a monetary gift down there. So if I, I bless his heart and bless him, uh, just love what he's doing. And, and it's amazing. Uh, so uh, amazing that there's David and Goliath out there trying to help Goli conquer Goliath, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a Goliath. He's a little guy trying to do something, something for his community, and that's awesome, you know what I mean? Thank you for your kind words, Mike. Yeah, if you go to yeah. Pinedale Christian Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, obviously, Mike, um, uh -huh. the Pinedale Christian Church, and, and there you're going to see a way, and I would just earmark it that, you know, it's for uh, the, the, the assistance to Hurricane, Hurricane yeah. Helene. Yeah, yeah and, and the uh, website's okay. pinedale.church is the website. Church. Yeah. I hope other listeners are listening and they can help you out too. I mean, that would be awesome. I know I'm just a listener, but <laughs> well, know, we're all just listeners. Let me just assure you that, that believe me, Mike, we are all uh, just listeners. And if we got our ears tuned to where they need to be, <laughs> And sometimes I'm yes, not sir. a very good listener. <laughs> yeah, my wife would assure you of that particular fact, <laughs> that, that Robbie is not a, all that good a listener as he needs to be uh, in so many circumstances. But, boy, do we need to be in, in times like these. Mike, I'm so grateful for you and, mm -hmm. and your love for people. And, Jerry, uh, for, you know, call, text me this morning, Collins, too, and, and being involved with what you're doing. And 
Lord, we, we, we thank you for our listeners, and we know that without them, you know, we, we, we wouldn't have a show. So I thank you for all you're doing in this, and we just we certainly will keep praying for all these folks out there. Thanks again for listening. Bye-bye.